All right, so both of the examples we're going to do, they're going to deal with square cross-sections. Uh, one thing I want to say first, though, is the cross-sections don't have to be square. They can really be any shape that we want them to be. Um, so we're going to look at a few different examples. Um, we're we're going to look mostly at square cross-sections, but we could have semicircular cross-sections or triangular cross-sections um, or even circular cross-sections. And depending on that, um, we're just going to use an area formula for that particular shape and integrate that area formula. And, and we'll look again at uh, where that comes from, why, why we integrate the area. Um, so yesterday, we'll go through this kind of quickly, we started slicing up this pyramid. Um, so we took one layer of the pyramid and we found the area of that layer um, by taking the side and squaring it, right? And we also said we, we defined um, an x here so that it made it easy for us to find the side length. So we said that x is that height, uh, that distance from the layer that we're on to the top of the pyramid. And that way, the, the side length of the square is going to be x. Um, and we could use similar triangles to show that. So that side length there is also x if the, the distance from that layer to the top of the pyramid is x. Notice that the layer that we're using is perpendicular to the x-axis. Um, I, I know it sounds kind of weird to call that the x-axis, but since the x uh, distance is vertical, we would call that an x-axis. Um, and the, the, the layer, the slice, is perpendicular to that. That's going to be kind of important to remember. Um, if we're going perpendicular, if we're slicing perpendicular to the x-axis, we're going to integrate with respect to x. Um, so then we said that the area is going to be x squared. And we had that formula that said that the volume is the integral of the area of each slice. So it's the integral of x squared with respect to x. And we said that the least that x could be is 0 and the greatest that x could be is 3. Um, so we got this integral here. And I left it to you to solve. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Um, what are we going to do to solve this integral? Let's do it analytically. So we've got x to the third over 3 evaluated from 0 to 3. Um, so then that's going to give us 27 over 3 minus 0 over 3, which is 9. <coughs> We also talked yesterday about using area formulas from geometry to kind of help us with integration. Um, that's something we could do here with volume also. We know a volume formula for a pyramid. Anybody remember what that volume formula is? Yes. <laughs> so the volume of a pyramid is one-third of the area of the base times the height. Well, this particular pyramid, the area of the base is going to be a square, so it's going to be 3 squared, right? And then the height is 3, and so we get an area, or I'm sorry, a volume of 9. Now, it's actually a lot easier to use this formula here than it is to use this formula, right? The, the main purpose of this example was not to say, if you have to find the area of a pyramid, from now on you have to use an integral. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm showing you is this, this method, this process works. And we can confirm that it works with this type of example because we have an alternative way of finding that volume. So we know, uh, we know that we get a valid answer here um, because we can confirm that using a geometric formula. Um, it, here's an example. Sorry, that is not the example I was looking for. Here is an example of one where we can't necessarily check it with a geometric formula. What we have here um, is a paperweight. I'm going to call this a paperweight. Um, it has a circular base. So if you just look at the base, it's a circle. Uh, that base has a radius of 1. And it has square cross sections sliced vertically perpendicular to the. And we're going perpendicular to the x-axis. I added that in here. OK, so guys, let's, let's try to get an analytic model of what's going on here. Um, so let's just represent the base first in the coordinate plane. 
Um, so I'm going to draw a coordinate plane here. And that is not a coordinate plane. Um, I'm going to want a bit bigger picture. So what we have here, we're going to represent the base of this paperweight um, with the unit circle. So what is the equation of the unit circle? x squared plus y squared equals 1. Exactly. x squared plus y squared equals 1. This is the base. Now, if I were to slice the base perpendicular to the x-axis, I'm going to just show you what a slice here is going to look like. Um, I'm going to take a slice perpendicular to the x-axis. And actually, instead of a slice, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, um, well, a rectangle. So I'm going to take this part right here. Uh, and the reason I did the rectangle is because, um, realistically, in real life, we can't have something without any width. So we're going to we're gonna keep the width in there for now for our model, and then we'll get rid of it once we start doing the calculus part. So this is going to be the base of a square, and the square is going to be built up out of this thing. So just to kind of get a picture, I'm going to draw us three-dimensionally here. Um, it's coming up out of... the screen in a sense so it's going to look something like this so I just took that rectangle um, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on isn't it um, so what we have here is what if we take this if we take this rectangle that approximates a slice of the the circle and then we we make that rectangle the base of a square. Um, what do we end up with here? What is this? What kind of shape is it? This rectangular prism, is. it's easy to find the volume of that, right? How would we find the volume of this rectangular prism? Or easy-ish? Length times width times height, right? So, um, or base times height times width, or whatever you want to call each of those dimensions. Um, So in this picture here, new new color, um, this right here, this length right here, that's going to be the side of the square. I'm just going to call that S for now. Okay, this width right here, what would we call that? Close. Delta X. That's the change in X, right? And what about the height? No. Also S. Remember, this is a square. So the two sides have the same length. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, I don't know where that came from. All right, so the volume of this thing is going to be S squared times delta X, right? You guys okay with that? So the trick here, then, in this particular problem is to figure out what S is. And what is S? Let's say I know what the X value is right here. Um, I need to tell you what here is. Let's say I know the X value right here. In fact, I want to write this in, entirely in terms of X. I want to figure out what the volume of this thing is in terms of this X value right here. So I've got the delta x, that's already in terms of x, but instead of s's here, I want x's here. So how could I figure out in terms of x what this length is right here? If I want to find this length right here, um, it would actually be easier to find this length right here. What is that? Let me ask this. What is that in terms of y? y? Yeah, it's just y, right? So this right here is y. And this right here, that length, well, for, if I choose an x value here, then the coordinates of this point are going to be x, y, and this is going to be the y value right here. 
right? Well, that means that this right here, that length is y. So I want to replace this y with something in terms of x. And what can I use to do that? Yeah, I can use this equation right here. I can solve this equation for y. Um, and when I do that, I get y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. And actually, it's positive or negative. The positive part is the top half of the circle. The negative part is the bottom half of the circle. And so that means that y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. So then the entire length right here, that, that length that we called s earlier, would be what? Two y, which would be two times the square root of one minus x squared. Or you guys remember what we did earlier to find the the area between two curves? We took the big curve minus the small curve. Another way to think about this would be to take the value on the big curve, um, this right here, which is y, minus the value on the bottom curve, which is negative y, but that one's the the negative square root. So what we would end up with then is the square root of 1 minus x squared minus the opposite of the square root of 1 minus x squared. So the top curve is the square root of 1 minus x squared. The bottom half is the opposite of the square root of 1 minus x squared. So if we take the top minus the bottom, we get the entire length here, which is the same thing as 2y or 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared. So how can I use this to find the volume of this? Plug it in for s here, right? We already know the volume, but it's in terms of s, so we just plug this in for s. So this volume is going to be <coughs> oops, uh, 2 square root of 1 minus x squared squared times delta x, which is going to be 4 times 1 minus x squared delta x. And this right here is the volume of one slice of this shape. To find the volume of the whole thing, remember when we did Riemann sums. You guys remember that vaguely? <coughs> I'm going to put volume of the whole thing here. It's going to be the sum of all of the slices. So it's the sum of each slice. Right? And when we made the slices really small, this sum symbol, this sigma, turned into an integral. So this is going to equal the integral of 4 times the quantity 1 minus x squared. Now the delta x, when it gets really, 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 really small, turns into the dx. So we have the integral of that with respect to x from where to where. What's the, what's the smallest the x can be? No. Negative 1. What's the biggest that x can be? One. Positive 1. So we get the volume of this whole thing, this paperweight, is going to be equal to this integral. And really, uh, you guys know how to evaluate the integral. This is the trick right here to get to this. So I, I want to summarize this real quick. I, I know we went through a lot of steps there. I took probably more time than I needed to on some and less than I should have on others. Um, but what we did here is we, we kind of imagined each slice and we found the volume of each slice. And the thickness of the slice was delta x. So basically we found the area times the thickness. So we found the area of the slice times the thickness of the slice. That's going to give us the volume. And the thickness of each slice is going to get so small that we're going to just call that dx eventually. Um, what happens then is we, we end up just summing the areas, adding up all the areas.
So we take the integral of the area of each slice. This 4 times the quantity 1 minus x squared, that's the area of this slice. Um, and we integrate that from the smallest value to the, the biggest value.